Welcome to Cattle Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili. Thank you for joining us. We start the show this week with news about Clarksburg. After months of discussion, the County Council has tentatively approved limits on construction in the 10 Mile Creek watershed in Clarksburg. And as Susan Kennedy reports, residents there recently made their voices heard to council members on the direction they'd like to see their community go. Susan? Lorna, more developments associated with the future of Clarksburg. The County Council recently held a town hall meeting where more than 300 residents came out to voice their concerns about the future of this up county community. When is Clarksburg honestly going to get what it was promised from the amended 1994 master plan with its infrastructure, its services, its professional related amenities, its parks, its library, th those things which we richly need. And for the survival of Clarksburg, it's imperative that we begin to receive some support from the council to have that happen. There was a wide array of topics covered in the hour long meeting, but topping the list concerns about recommendations that would limit the amount of development near the 10 Mile Creek. Just two weeks ago, two council committees agreed to cap the amount of impervious surface produced by new construction. And this week, the full council agreed with that recommendation. We took seriously our responsibility to be stewards of the environment, but we did take into account fully the land use considerations and fully how Clarksburg isn't what we thought it was going to be when we first passed a plan 20 years ago, which is appropriate. The science said that existing mitigation um, was not successful in protecting the creek and there was lots of evidence that you could not apply what was being proposed over an entire watershed and would be unlikely to protect the creek from future damage. In a straw vote, the council approved a 15% impervious cap for the Egan and Miles Coppola properties and 6% for the Pulte Homes plan, scaling back the original scope of each project by several hundred units. Council President Craig Rice voted in favor of the plan, but not the impervious caps. Allowing for additional de development to happen on uh, the east side of 270, closest to town center, would help support uh, the town center and support overall that region, that town center district. And so that's the reason why I felt it was a mistake for us leaving uh, some other options on the table uh, to be able to give uh, Clarksburg residents more assurity that there was going to be uh, something else that came about that would help support town center. In the end, council members say the regulations they plan to impose will allow some construction, foster the evolution of Clarksburg, and will limit damage to the watershed. The council will take official action on the plan at its session March 25th. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. It's been a big week for animal lovers in Montgomery County. The county's new animal shelter is now open for business. The spacious state-of-the-art facility replaces the old cramped shelter. My MC Media's Sonia Berg reports. Sonia? Everyone likes a new home, and this new state-of-the-art animal shelter, it's designed to serve our community for many years to come. Three, two, one. Joining the county executive at the ribbon cutting and opening ceremony were local leaders and hundreds of animal lovers who were able to tour the spacious facility. This facility is three times as large as the, uh, as the older, uh, now former animal shelter. We want to make a statement here that we are not the county that we should be unless and until we respect animals and we provide them with the safety, the love and the respect that we want them to have. Montgomery County loves animals. This facility is a result of that. This is really one of the finest buildings you'll see for animal welfare in the country. The new animal shelter is operated by the Montgomery County Police Department's Animal Services Division. We have all kinds of animals who come into our shelter in Montgomery County. Dogs, cats, of course. Rabbits, guinea pigs, rats, gerbils, hamsters, snakes. We have three turtles here now. And we get the occasional horse, hot belly pig, and peacock, just to name a few. The first floor of the center includes housing for the animals. There are 72 dog dens and 98 cat cages. Outside, there's a walking trail and screened exercise runs to provide animals with fresh air and exercise. I just love 
everything here. The first thing I walked in yesterday when the animals had been brought over, and I walked in and I heard that first happy bark, and that just made me smile. And even the animals seem happy. They're smiling and they're loving their new digs. A dog lover and animal lover, and this is a wonderful place to be as a dog lover and an animal lover. Our county really did this right. We officially want to open the Adoption Center. Yeah! For County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke. The animal shelter is located at 7315 Monk Castro Mill Road in Durwood. The new spike in crime in Tacoma Park has residents taking action. A two-hour crime forum was hosted by state and local officials, along with police chiefs from local jurisdictions. Tacoma Park's Regina Rees has the story on why residents are asking for crime prevention. Before January 11th, I felt safe in Tacoma Park. It's scary. Frightening experiences from these Tacoma Park residents, one even held at gunpoint. Their chilling testimonies are heard by these men and women, police chiefs from local jurisdictions. After a string of burglaries and naming Sycamore Avenue as the city's newest hot spot, public concern is growing thick. Another issue? Cross-border crime. One person could be responsible for 20, 30, 40 crimes, so, and, and they don't all occur in Tacoma Park. Goldberg adds their biggest hurdle is investigation. Making sure that we have timely information and, and that we share information with our partners in the other jurisdictions. That's, that's the critical issue. According to the Tacoma Park Police Department, burglaries in the city rose by 54 percent from 2012 to 2013. Within the same time span, burglaries on Sycamore Avenue increased over 300 percent. Metropolitan Police Chief suggests one of D.C.'s tactics, supervision agencies. For us, we have great partnerships in the district with the agencies that supervise people who are um, under supervision but out on release in the communities. A lot of the pattern crimes that we see that we talk about here today are people who are repeat offenders. And so repeat offenders oftentimes are under supervision. Montgomery County Police Chief also draws on his experience. With this district community action team, these officers have nothing, uh, th their sole responsibility is to address these spikes in crime in particular areas, and it's become very effective. It really has um, helped us reduce crime in the county, and I think it's an effective strategy that could be, really could work anywhere. Local police chiefs say they want residents to know they've taken a lesson from the past. Their agencies are in constant communication with one another. They fully cooperate to close cases. And now, after this town hall meeting, they'll regroup to do what it takes to reduce and prevent crime in the city. For a County Report this week, I'm Regina Reese. Domestic violence and dating abuse are often difficult topics for teens to talk about. But according to statistics, one in three teens will experience dating violence. My MC Media's Valerie Bunk has a story on how the Choose Respect Forum works to reduce the number of domestic abuse cases among teens. Don't be afraid to say something was the message communicated to teens during a conference in Silver Spring, which focused on encouraging the next generation to choose respect when it comes to dating and relationships. Repeat after me, I, I choose, choose respect, respect myself, myself and, and my, my friends. friends. One in three teens and young adults will experience some form of dating abuse, leaders reminded parents and teens at the fifth annual Choose Respect Conference, where reducing this statistic was the number one priority. I sat in juvenile court for several years and uh, unfortunately a lot of times exposure to domestic violence uh, is something that a lot of the kids have, have suffered. I think that for kids dating is trial and error and there are a lot of errors made along the way so yeah, we see, we see some patterns that are unfortunate. Often the county spends efforts, and, and we have to, to help victims of domestic violence, and we have stepped those efforts up and to prosecute abusers. The workshops focused on educating teens on getting the help they need, and even featured a special session for Spanish-speaking parents to address the growing Hispanic community. I learned a lot throughout the other parents, um, how to you know, leave with your kids, how to, when to understand when there's a problem on the teenager's uh, life with the kids, especially right now with the technology going on. For parents and their teens, the day was an opportunity to learn. And some said that they're going to make changes in how they talk about dating from now on. I'm going to stop telling him what to do, which is something that I tend to do a lot as a parent. But I think uh, it's best for him to 
make the decisions. I can only give him the tools and let him use those tools to his advantage. I'm gonna learn to like communicate with my mom and you know just be um, not not keep things to myself. From now on, I'm definitely gonna watch out for any relationships I'm in, in the future, um, in order to make the right decisions and do what I think is right. For County Report this week, I'm Valerie Bonk. When we come back, the Up County Advisory Board is looking for new members. And it is time to change the batteries on those smoke detectors. We'll be right back. There's a reason why area law enforcement are out enforcing pedestrian and traffic safety laws and preventing killer pedestrian crashes. Be alert. Be street smart. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls. 311. MC 311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. The Up County Citizens Advisory Board is looking for applicants who would like to serve as part of this 20-member advisory body to County Executive Ike Leggett and County Government. Anyone who resides up county can apply to become a board member. We're looking for applicants, people who live in the up county. They may be from the business community or a civic organization or just a resident who wants to get involved. We need their opinions and, and ideas to, in order to share with the county executive and the county council what the community thinks about different issues and different projects. For more information, call the up county regional center at 240-777 8040. The county's Office of Consumer Protection is celebrating National Consumer Protection Week by launching an anonymous tip hotline to encourage county residents to report any deceptive trade practices in the marketplace. In other words, the Office of Consumer Protection wants to hear from you about any potential fraud or scams. What we're looking for is uh, complaints about businesses that you think they're doing wrong. It might be, you might be the victim, you might not be the victim, or somebody you know. For more information or to check any merchant's complaint record, call 240-777-3636 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash consumer. Daylight Savings ends November 4th, and the Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service is urging all residents to check the batteries in their smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors. Here's Captain Oscar Garcia to talk with us about this simple life-saving task. Captain? Thank you, and yes, with Daylight Savings, firefighters are going to be available to talk to residents about fire safety and preventable injuries, with the main goal, of course, to be that they have a working smoke alarm in their homes. Uh, manufacturers, for the most part, recommend that smoke alarms be replaced every six to ten years. So if you've been in your home since 2003, it's probably time for you to replace your smoke alarm. Uh, firefighters are going to be equipped with extra batteries and smoke alarms uh, to talk to residents. And in the event that they need help or assistance in replacing smoke alarms and batteries, they're going to be available to do that. You can also call 311 to schedule an appointment for firefighters to come out and check your smoke alarms. But again, we recommend this one on each level of your home and uh, for the most part outside sleeping areas and inside your sleeping areas. And uh, this is gonna ensure that you have early warning in the event of a fire or smoke inside your home. Thank you, Captain Garcia, for those details. And now let's talk about water. The county's Department of Environmental Protection is co-hosting with WSEC a free family-friendly H2O summit. That's right, participants can learn how their daily actions affect local streams and rivers. 
If you would like to learn how to get involved in protecting drinking water, don't miss the H2O Summit, which is scheduled for Saturday, March 22nd from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Silver Spring Civic Building at 1 Veterans Plaza. When we come back, several MCPS students perform at the National Education Association's annual gala. And Glenview Mansion in Rockville dresses up for a very peculiar art exhibit. We'll be right back. This message brought to you by FEMA. Home fires occur most often in winter. Keep anything that can catch fire at least three feet from heating equipment. And never use an oven to heat your home. Stay in the kitchen when frying, grilling, or broiling food. Turn space heaters off when you leave the room or go to bed. Make sure all vents are clear of snow and ice to allow carbon monoxide to vent outside. Have your furnace, heating system, and chimneys serviced each year by a qualified professional. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. Welcome back to Canada Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili. A team of Montgomery College students took second place in the Maryland Sustainable Growth Challenge Student Competition. MCTV has a story. Montgomery College ranked as one of the top schools in the Maryland Sustainable Growth Challenge Student Competition, taking second place competing against universities throughout the state. I see that we did our job at the end and just winning second place in the sustainable growth competition was just I guess the cherry on top so this is the Maryland sustainability challenge competition and it's sponsored by the state of Maryland Department of Planning the deadline was at the beginning of December we submitted our proposal to um, to the uh, judges down in Annapolis and we were one of the finalists selected so we went down and gave our presentation the Maryland Sustainable Growth Challenge Student Competition is designed to engage college students in conducting community planning exercises and developing creative solutions for real communities. Um, the competition entailed taking a site in Montgomery County and assessing that site, a site that was in need of repair uh, or mitig um, environmental mitigation. The team of students from Montgomery College analyzed the economic social and environmental aspects of the existing ghost shopping mall known as Burtonsville Crossing, just north of Maryland 198 and Maryland Route 29. That the students worked on taking the site in Burtonsville was kind of an urban design, kind of a new urbanism, a, little, a lot of architecture, but a lot of just planning about the social, economic, and sustainable issues of, of today. This is something that was real life based. So these students were actually designing a project for a current a problem and crafting a solution that hopefully someone will adopt. This is another example of how Montgomery College prepares its students for today's workforce. At Montgomery College, Rockville, for County Report This Week, I'm Stan Jones. MCPS students perform at the NEA Foundation Gala in Washington, D.C and put on quite a show. MCPS TV is here with the highlights. The annual NEA Foundation Gala on February 7th brought a who's who of public education and celebrity to the National Building Museum to honor the hard work of America's teachers. And the soundtrack for the evening was provided by MCPS students. We were approached by NEA for this gala. It's an annual event where they honor teachers. So um, every year they pick a school system to do the performances. And we worked with them uh, talking about what makes Montgomery County very special. And we said what makes us special really is the diversity of our students. One of the things that we think is really important um, over the course of the evening is to both celebrate teachers but also the students that they have. So throughout the evening we'll have young people from Montgomery County, um, displaying their incredible talent for our, our audience of over 800 people. This is a very big event. In fact, we like to call it the Oscars of education. 
five performances showcase the diverse talents of MCPS students in a variety of areas, from African drumming to madrigal choirs to Latin dance. The event also highlighted Richard Montgomery student Blessed Sharif, who performed two original poems, including one she wrote specifically for the NEA event. It's such an honor to be a part of an event that honors our teachers and what they do for um, not only our county but our entire nation. Uh, so I'm really grateful to be able to take part in, 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 in giving the teachers the, um, the honor that's due to them. So we are ending our celebration this evening with hope. For her poem on the definition of hope, she had some help from award-winning actress Felicia Rashad, who served as an MC for the evening. A feeling of expectation and desire, derived from Old English hapa or hapian. It was a great experience for the students and the attendees. It feels really good to perform because you have all these teachers, superintendents, um, and this just special great place. Executive Ike Leggett presented a proclamation to some members of the cast and their artistic director from Adventure Theatre in Glen Echo Park. Turns out they just completed a month-long season of sold-out shows on Broadway with the Three Little Birds theatrical production. The show was about living life and about getting out of your house, out of your comfort zone, and really enjoying what the world has to offer. It was set in Jamaica, a fictional land, and birds sang, and there was also an evil bird that stole the hair of little timid kids. And so it was about the celebration of life and celebration of culture and loving being who you are. Adventure Theater had premiered the plate last season, and well, it ended up on Broadway. The local guy who's done well recognition by the executive took place because the entire cast and crew are from our region and Adventure Theater is in Bethesda. Throughout March, student masterpieces will be showcased at the Glenview Mansion in Rockville as part of the annual student art show. Rockville 11's Jennifer Lixey has a preview of what you can expect to see. Students recently dropped off their artwork at the Glenview Mansion for the annual student art show where they get a chance to show off their talent. The students um, from kindergarten through 12th grade in the city of Rock, within the city of Rockville, is, they either have to go to school or live within the city of Rockville and they get to come and present their artwork. Not only will their artwork be seen, but it's also a chance for students to grow as artists. This is a way to get positive feedback for him. You know, he can bring his grandparents to see his artwork and you know, he does a lot of sports and he gets a lot of positive feedback with sports, but here's a way to support his art, you know, his, um, his love for art. He's been drawing for since he was two, so we're excited about this opportunity. I'm 11th grader. I did it last year when I was in 10th grade and this was um, my first screen printing and it, screen print is really like special. It's um, it's a labor intensive process, but it's really fun. Like, the main concept of it is like this cute little monster stepping on the buildings, but like he's only trying to water his plant. The student art show exhibit will be shown at the Glenview Mansion from March 2nd through March 20th. For more information, visit rockvillemd.gov slash arts. It's free to come in and see all of the pieces and we have it looks like we have a great selection of both two-dimensional and three-dimensional artwork for this show and the kids get to come here and see their work in a professional um, like what a real artist would hang so it's it's special for I think the mansion for anyone who works here plus all of the students involved when we come back we take you to Brookside Gardens for the Green Matters Symposium stay tuned A team of five Montgomery College Construction Management students has taken first place in the National Association of Home Builders Construction Competition. Using a basic home floor plan, the team created drawings, estimates, and a construction schedule to take home top honors. And two student teams from MC's architecture program tied for second place in the Maryland Sustainable Growth Challenge. These students identified and solved community land use issues for Burtonsville, Maryland. Make plans to check out one of the many beautiful and provocative art exhibits now showing on all three MC campuses. 
From photography to woodcut prints to graphic design, there's something on display at MC for every art enthusiast. Check out the arts calendar for descriptions and locations. Welcome back to Counter Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vigili. The city of Tacoma Park is saying goodbye after losing one of their own. Ward 3 Council member Kay Daniels Cohen died from cancer at age of 71. Here are a few words from the city who know her best. Kay didn't ask why, she asked why not and why not now. With her sparkly shoes on and her sparkly hat, this entire community has just been outstanding. She's been so supportive all along of not just what we do, but what everyone does and for the people of, the, of Tacoma Park. We miss her so much and we were so fortunate to have the time we had with Kay. Not only did she come to the race, but she promoted all of the Safe Routes to School events throughout the community. Her attitude was infectious. It was the kind of personality that as Buddy said, just caused you want to want to go out and just do better at whatever you were doing. She told me I was an inspiration to her with all my uh, demonstrations and peace works and how I got injured there in Georgia. But I wanted to tell you people, Kay is an inspiration to me many times over. One of the things when I retired from my old job and told people was, you know, that, that seat that I was sitting in for the last couple of years uh, will be filled by somebody else's rear end and they can try and undo everything you've done or change things and do things differently. But the things that you can't change are the people's lives that you touch and the way you've made changes in people. And that's, that's really what Kay was about. What I think about most when I think about Kay is her joy, her enthusiasm, and her persistence. She would take on projects and she would see them through to the end and she did whatever she had to do to make sure that she could be here for the residents of Tacoma Park. For this week's Brooks Gardens Clips and Tips, we take you to the popular Green Matters Symposium recently held at Brookside. Each year since 2004, the Green Matters Symposium addresses topics ranging from water-wise landscapes to urban farming pioneers. Green Matters aims to build awareness of the positive role plants and horticulture play in improving environmental quality. This year's topic was about how our weather is changing and what a gardener can do in a shift in climate. For more information about past Green Matters Symposium, visit brooksidegardens.org. Now we meet our pet of the week, Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society brings us a female cat named Cookie. This is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society and I'm here with Cookie. Cookie's just about four years old. She's a spayed female, very affectionate, very loving cat and is desperately looking for a home. She has the most beautiful green gold eyes I've ever seen. Please visit Cookie at the shelter. Give us a call at 240-773-5960 or visit us on the web at mchumane.org. Save the date for the opening of the Olney Library. The newly renovated library at 3500 Olney Laytonsville Road will officially reopen at a ribbon cutting ceremony on March 15th at 9.30 a.m. And the public is invited to attend the opening day festivities and check out the new facility. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. Now we leave you at the Tacoma Park Farmer's Market, which has just been nominated for Best Farmer's Market in D.C. You can catch the market every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Old Town Tacoma Park. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching. Okay, we'll just put, I'm going to put two in.